Yes, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for keeping it. Uh, my name is Ronnie L. Maestro, and um, I'm happy to introduce to you, I'm happy to bring to you one of uh, the world's biggest worship leaders for years. You've heard about him. At least you, you've owned one of his songs on your, on, your, on your phone, maybe at your home. You've listened, you've watched this gentleman do amazing, amazingly around the world and this morning um, I just can't wait to introduce to you Don Moen. Mr. Don Moen, you're most welcome to RTV. Thank you. It's great. <laughs> yes. yeah. it's great just, to be here. just a brief biography about Don. Who is Don? Uh, we've, we, we know about Don on the internet, we've read, we've, we've watched on YouTube, but uh, in your words, who is Don Moen? Well, first of all, you got to be uh, careful what you read on the internet about Don Moen because <laughs> double check your facts because uh, I woke up uh, about a year and a half ago and the news was out that I had died in Los Angeles and I had thousands of people calling me are you alive yeah. uh, and uh, so the, you read a lot of things on the internet that are not true um, so whatever you, uh, people have read um, I am alive I'm married to the same woman for 45 years we have five children, so who is Don Moen? I'm a, I'm a husband, I'm a father, I'm a worshiper, and, um, I, and I'm here in Rwanda for my first time and, and grateful to be here. And um, uh, in, in, in the biography that, that I read on the internet sometimes, it said, ask Don what he is, and he'll tell you he's an architect. Uh, but uh, I've said that because I love putting events together that, uh, that, that welcome the presence of God, that create an atmosphere of worship. And that's what I did as the president of Integrity Music for, for 20 years. You know, I signed the artists, I signed the songs. Uh, folks like uh, Darlene Check and Ron Canoli and Alvin Slaughter and Israel Houghton and Hillsong and Hillsong United and Paul Balash. Uh, this is what I did. And, um, and I love putting recordings together and events together that, uh, that, that create an atmosphere that welcomes God's presence. And that's what we're going to do here um, at, at the uh, event uh, tonight. You know, just create an atmosphere that welcomes God's presence, and I'm happy to be a part of it. Uh, and that's, I guess, a, a little bit of who Don Moen is. When I was 37 years old, I was writing a song. I just want to be where you are, dwelling daily in your presence. And the Lord reminded me that he put that desire in my heart as a young boy. And uh, nothing has changed since then, and here I am today. It's amazing. Wow. Um Pastor Don Moen, that that is a, a great a great uh, maybe biography. I can say <laughs> a lot of a lot of people have done music. We know about a lot of people that have kept on for years, for many years. But maybe before I come to to the line of music. Uh, Whenever people, there are people that are exceptional with their talents. We can talk about our footballers, mention our Cristiano Ronaldo, mention about Messi or Eden Hazard and all of them. But you find in their families, they have had someone who has been playing football. Mm -hmm. You're one of uh, the people that have carried on with this vision of uh, worshipping for a lot of time and you've kept uh, the same pace. Could, could you be having someone in, in your lineage? Do you have a lineage of uh, music from your family, maybe dad or mom or uncle, someone in your family, or did you just inherit this from, was it an inspiration from God? It's an interesting uh, question. I, I was, uh, uh, I, I don't, as far as I know, have any other like worship leaders in the family. My mother was a piano player uh, at our church. And my mother was the one who um, uh, forced me to take piano lessons, along with my brother and two sisters. And and uh, she, I didn't like it, but she said, Donnie, you wear the clothes we provide for you. You eat the food we provide for you. You sleep in the bed we provide for you. You will play the piano. So six years, I took piano lessons and um, and. Uh, then I started taking violin lessons, uh, and that 
that is what eventually uh, put me through university, uh, a scholarship on the violin. And uh, so I was a classically trained musician. It wasn't until I joined, uh, I went to Oral Roberts University, I transferred in there, and um, I met a, uh, a group called Living Sound and an evangelist named Terry Law. And uh, something gripped my heart when I heard them sing, and I, and I, and I said, Lord, I'll, I'll do anything you want me to do. I'll go anywhere you want me to go. And I got on a bus, I thought, for a year, you know, and 10 years later, I got off the bus. I mean, I just kept touring. And um, and then my life took a real a change. I was uh, doing missionary evangelism through music. Um, and even after all of that, uh, I knew there was something more I wanted to do with my music. And I wrote on a, on a piece of paper one time in my journal, I said, I don't want to write a song unless it comes in power, praise, healing, and deliverance. I wrote those four things down. And I didn't write a song for a couple of years. And, and then I, I clearly heard the Lord's voice one night. I heard a voice, uh, and, and it's, this voice said to me, open your Bible to Psalm 40, verse 3. And I got out of bed and opened my Bible, and Psalm 40, verse 3 says, I have put a new song in your mouth a song of praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and put their trust in the Lord. And I knew at that moment that something had happened to me. And I said to my wife, I had an experience last night. It was like I'm ordained into something and I don't even know what it is yet. Because I did not like singing in front of people. I did not like crowds. Uh, in fact, I failed my speech class in university because I could not give a speech in front of 15 people. <laughs> so so the thought of me singing in front of a lot of people didn't appeal to me, but yet God had really put something different in my heart. And so uh, it, it's like it's like he pushed me into this. And then I was with this evangelist that every week he made me sing before he preached. And that was really uncomfortable for me because I wasn't a great piano player and I wasn't a great singer, but he pushed me and he pushed me out of my comfort zone. And I, so, and I thank God many times for Terry Law, uh, my friend who, who just pushed me beyond my comfort zone and got me doing what I'm doing today. And um, I think that's the way it is for many people. There's, there's somebody that pushes you beyond your comfort zone. And he also gave me a platform for my music. And then I met Integrity Music, and that became a big platform for my music as well. Okay. Uh, Pastor Don Mowen, when did you start music? When, when, uh, uh, at what age, what was your first song uh, that was recorded professionally in a studio? Which year was that? Oh, wow. That was probably 1970, uh, 72 or 73. I, was, I started writing music for a group called Living Sound. And uh, anyway, uh, probably, probably not great songs but they weren't bad songs and and you know I that's when I started writing I started trying to trying to work on my arranging and my writing techniques and and uh, I kind of I kind of grew into it yeah. Um, you've performed uh, to uh, you've performed before very many people, a lot of countries, all over the world. Do you have a legendary performance that you will live to remember? Whenever you remember that performance, you're like, God. I know you, I've watched a lot of performances from you, and all of them crazy. Mm -hmm. But you have one that you feel that was massive. Which country? Oh, there. There are many, there, there are so many that stand out in my mind, but the one that comes to my mind first uh, when you ask that question is in Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, I was doing an event called The Experience, and it's a multi-artist thing, uh, similar to what we're doing here in Rwanda, but um, half a million people were there, and it rained so hard 
that the power went out um, except one speaker and one light. And, um, and I was with uh, Donnie McClurkin, uh, Mary Mary, Israel Houghton, and uh, the, the, the four of us went out under the uh, out from under the covering and it was pouring down rain we had one microphone just like this and we uh, we just stood there and a half a million people worshiped the Lord in the pouring rain and the PA system wasn't working right the the, the place was flooding and yet uh, the audience didn't leave they put chairs over their heads and and just kept singing and my wife who was there said that is probably the the, the 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 purest worship that she's ever experienced because it wasn't about the production it wasn't about the excellence it was just pure worship in the midst of a pouring rainstorm so I I always go back to that experience and and we were drenched I mean just drenched um, but but you know the people didn't mind they just worshiped so that's probably one of the most meaningful uh, worship experiences I've had uh, Pastor Don Moen maybe as we get to the end um, sometimes whenever you're going on pulpit you have a list of songs that you've prepared to sing do you normally change this playlist sometimes according maybe to the spirit uh, uh, okay do you keep the same playlist how do you go about about your performance well my my band always gives me a hard time about this because they want a song list they always want a set list and then when i tour some promoters are asking me what songs I'm going to sing six months before I'm there. I said, well, how do I know? You know, I would like to just kind of hear the Holy Spirit if I'm by myself, which tomorrow I don't have a band with me, um, but, um, you know, uh, but I, I st still will write out a set list just so I kind of know where I'm going. But the more people you have on the stage, the more important it is for a song list, but my band knows knows me really well that I change up the list frequently, and uh, and they, they sometimes they say, "What what are you going to do next?" I said, "Well, the Holy Spirit will tell you if you listen." <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm, I I think it's good to have a list to kind of know where you're going, yes. but I think it's uh, as a worship leader, you always need to be ready to change uh, a, a strategy if, and listen to the Holy Spirit. I'm always listening and uh, sometimes in the middle of a song or at the end of a song, I, I have a nudge that I should go a certain direction and I tr really try to pay attention to that. I think it's important to have a list, to have a plan and then say to the Holy Spirit, we have our list, we have our program, but this is your night. Come and do all that you want to do. And we submit um, to his agenda, not ours. So, and, and uh, that's the way I approach uh, the song list. Uh, but I, if, if, you, if you're only by yourself on the stage, you can get away with a lot more. But if you have, you know, 10, 15, 20 people on the stage, you owe it to them to give them a, at least an idea of where you're going to go. But, you know, if I tell that story, they laugh because I always have a set list. And sometimes right before the count off, I'll just just to give the band a hard time, I'll completely I'll start singing a completely different song only because I'm mischievous yeah. and I I love I can't see the faces of the band because they're behind me, but I I know what they're doing. They're going. <laughs> Where's he going? What's he doing? I, I know. I love it. Though. <laughs> anyway, uh, Don Moen, uh, whenever you, you grew up and maybe you got a lot of experiences, a lot of funny things you've done in life. Uh, do you have that one thing that is so funny that you did maybe in, in school when you're still a child or when you got married? Something funny that when you, rem when you remember, you feel like laughing the whole day. Something funny that you've ever done in life. Oh, I've got a lot of funny stories. Um, uh, one that comes to mind is um, I was in uh, Canada leading worship and they had the piano, a grand piano, 
on a uh, on a platform about about this high, and um, during the night, uh, the piano bench kept working itself farther and farther to the back of the platform, and it was right in the very deep moment of worship, and uh, it, I think I was singing, "Holy, holy, holy Lord." God of power and might. And it was this really powerful worship moment. And at that moment, the piano bench slipped off the platform. And I tried to catch myself, but I couldn't. And I I literally went right over backwards. And I did it like a backward somersault. And there were about 1,500 people there. There was this gasp in the audience. And the first thought I had was... Uh, keep it worshipful, Don, act like nothing happened. And, I, and then I, you know what, I figured there's no use. So I just started laughing. And I thought, well, I said to the audience, there goes that moment. And, and I, you know, what are you going to do? You have to laugh about it yeah. when things like that happen. Um, anyway, I, I've got, when you travel as much as, as I've traveled, uh, a lot of things happen. Um, I was in Kenya a couple of years ago and I ended up doing this um, uh, late night uh, nationwide show and, and the last thing I had asked is am I going to have to sing? They said no you don't have to sing. So I get there and I see a piano on the stage and I and I said what's the piano doing there? Oh they said oh it's a 90 minute show and it's all you with singing with the host and I'm going oh so let me go check out the piano to see if it works well the piano didn't they didn't have a, a sustain pedal on it and what they had they had a volume pedal so like like you use for a guitar a volume pedal and and it was backwards so like when I pressed it all the way down the sustain was all the way off and when I pressed pulled all the way up the, the sustain was all the way on. And I said to the director, I said, this piano's not working. And then the floor director is counting down, three, two, one, we're live with Don Moen. And, and the piano didn't work, and I had to play probably 10 songs trying to figure out where that sustain pedal is supposed to be. Oh, I've got a lot of stories. Uh, uh, I could go on all night with those funny stories. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, what should the Rwandan people expect uh, today, this afternoon at Camp Kigali? It's your first time in Rwanda. Uh, these people have been waiting for you for years. We've had a, lo a lot of years, by the way, they told us, that morning is coming, like from 2015. <laughs> I've heard such stories. That morning is coming. So we've been waiting about this name. And even this time around when they said that morning was coming, people were like, mm, yeah. we've had those stories a lot lot of time and here you are what should the random people expect to, uh, this afternoon well first of all I, I really uh, appreciate RG consult and MTN you know for for bringing for putting together this um, the, the event because um, they're the ones that finally put it together to bring me here and uh, I know we have uh, gone down the road several times but uh, the the promoters really wanted to make sure that people knew that I was really, really here, um, and and not just uh, you know a, a rumor. So, um, what can you expect tonight? Um, I'm, you know, my my vision is always pretty simple. Uh, Psalm 22, verse three, says God is enthroned on the praises of His people. Um, so when we worship Him and praise Him. He has promised to be in our midst, and when God is in our midst, what's he going to do? He will heal, he'll save, he'll deliver, he'll bring hope if you're hopeless, encouragement if you're discouraged. This is what God does when we're in his presence. Now, this is a multi-artist event, so uh, you'll have Levixen and uh, uh, Israel and, and Don Moe. You know, you got a, a broad group of a different talents on the stage, uh, old and young. But there's something wonderful about worship. It really does transcend uh, generations, uh, denominations, and cult cultures. It's, it's amazing what worship can do. So um, there'll be uh, uh, several different musical styles, 
all with the same heart for worship. And, you know, I can only do what I do. I don't have my big band with me, but it's... Um, it's Don Moen, and somebody told me one time, Don, your piano is your pulpit. When you sit down and play, that's when the presence of God, that's where God will bless you. And um, when I'm on the stage with a lot of talented people, like you'll hear tonight, um, it, there's, there's a temptation to become intimidated because uh, I look at that talent and I look at uh, Levixen jumping around and... and, and um, uh, Isaac and just all these guys are so good and I and I hear one a voice in one ear saying you better dial it up Don Moen Don Moen is not enough and then I hear the Holy Spirit saying just be Don Moen yes. and that's that's the word I try to give to people and that's been a good word for me uh, over the years I've learned to realize I can only be Don Moen yes. I can't be hip and cool and have great dance steps. If I tried that, I'd fall flat on my face. And the people would say, who are you trying to be? What the people want, they just want me to be Don Moen. And so, um, so that's, that's who I'm going to be tomorrow. I'll just sing uh, my ballads. You know, I'll sing, the, I want to be where you are. I'll sing, God will make a way. I'll sing, our Father. I don't know what any, whatever anybody wants to hear me sing. But that's, that's what I'm going to do. And, and as we worship, I really believe that God is going to touch people here and touch this nation. And I want to thank, uh, thank you for this opportunity. And I'm so happy to be here. I really have wanted to come to Rwanda for many, many years. Uh, Darlene Check, my friend, uh, did a, a Hope Rwanda. And she was always telling me, Don, you have to get to Rwanda. And I, and, and I have lots of uh, Rwandan friends that I meet on tour. And they always say, when are you going to Rwanda? And uh, so finally, at long last, uh, I am here, and I'm sad that it took me so long because it's a, just a beautiful nation that has been through hell. I mean, what's happened here, but yet uh, to see what God is doing here is amazing to me. It's, uh, it's a restoration. You know, God, God uh, is doing something special here. I can just sense it. So um, this, um, this is going to be, I hope, the the uh, first of an annual event for this Praise Fest, but also there are a lot of things that I'd like to do to just be able to come back to Rwanda and, and to see the land and uh, be with the people. This trip, we're kind of in and out. Uh, and I go to Johannesburg Monday morning, but um, uh, at least I'm here. Next time I'll be with my band and, uh, and we can maybe stay longer. Uh, but it's... Uh, I, um, it's so beautiful. I was just surprised. I don't know what I expected. I just didn't expect this when I arrived.